Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Now, if you watched my last video, you know that I've been testing out a new action camera. That would be this guy right here, the DJI Osmo Action 4. Now that I've had a bit more time with it, I'm going to give you a quick review and tell you my favorite settings and mounting options for mountain bike POV footage. First off, some disclosure, DJI sent me this camera as well as some accessories and a small commission in order to do this review, but they've had no input into the content itself. Let's run through the specs of the camera and then we're going to jump straight into the riding footage because when it comes to reviewing an action camera, I think the proof is really in the pudding. The Action 4 shoots in 4K up to 120 frames per second, has 155 degree ultra wide field of view, a large 1 over 1.3 inch sensor for low light footage. It also uses 10 bit color and features a D Log M color profile for those interested in doing some color grading. It has dual touch screens, as well as one of my favorite features, the magnetic quick release mount. In terms of price, the standalone camera goes for $299 USD, but DJI also offers different accessory bundles you can buy. I'd recommend the Adventure Combo, which is 100 bucks more, but adds two extra batteries, a battery case, and a selfie stick. The battery case is pretty slick. It can store and fast charge three batteries at a time, has space for two SD cards, and has indicator lights to tell you approximately how much charge is left in each battery. Since extra batteries are a must with any action camera, and this battery case is so convenient, it's a great value. All right, let's jump into the riding footage. I'm gonna show you clips from different rides filmed in various lighting conditions and with different settings, and then you can judge the quality for yourself. These first few clips were shot in 30 frames per second using a normal color profile with automatic settings, and this was shot on a foggy, rainy day as you can see by the water droplets on the lens. Overall, I was pretty happy with this footage, especially for coming straight off the camera. Now here's a low light sample from that same ride. Between the dark clouds, tree cover, and wet dirty lens, wasn't exactly ideal filming conditions, but the camera managed to salvage some usable footage, which is all I really ask for using an action camera in low light. I also wonder what could have been, because I just learned that the Action 4 lets you select the minimum shutter speed. And if I would have known that at the time, I think that would have helped reduce the shakiness and blurriness of this clip, albeit at the expense of a higher ISO and more noisy footage. I've also tried my hand at color grading using the D-Log M color profile, which is essentially a raw, unprocessed format that gives you better dynamic range and flexibility for color grading. Here's what the raw footage looks like straight off the camera using the D-Log M profile. And this is after color grading has been applied. <laughs> Here's a comparison between color graded D Log M footage and another clip that was filmed using the normal color profile with automatic settings. These clips were shot back to back on a day with nice even lighting, and I can't say I see a significant difference between the two, although my color grading expertise is fairly limited. On days like this with decent lighting, I think the automatic settings look pretty darn good and also save some time when it comes to editing. Now, one scenario where I'll keep using the D Log M profile is in high contrast lighting conditions. For example, when you're filming in the forest on a sunny day and can end up with washed out highlights and overly dark shadows. The D-Log M profile gives you a wider dynamic range so you can even out the lighting across your shot. Here's another sample clip. This was filmed later in the evening under a mix of sun and cloud. I'll show you the ungraded footage here and then again with my color grading applied. Now I probably could have used the normal profile with auto settings here. I just happened to be filming in D-Log M that day and personally I think this footage looks amazing. Maybe I'll just let the footage speak for itself. This clip was filmed in 60 frames per second using the normal color profile. And aside from the camera being pointed too far down, I'm pretty happy with the footage overall and will post this straight to YouTube without any editing. Having some difficulty with these off camber wet roots. Here's one more sample filmed in 60 frames per second. Now when it comes to frame rate, I appreciate the extra clarity that you get filming in 60 frames per second but I think most of the time I'll probably stick with either 24 or 30 frames per second. I like a bit more motion blur, I think it makes it look more natural, and filming in lower frame rates will also improve battery life and take up less card space. Here's an example of how the camera handles terrible lighting. I'm riding in the forest mid-afternoon on a sunny day with a clear blue sky, 
You can see how bad this dappled lighting is. It makes for such a high contrast scenario that it's really hard to get good footage. But I think the camera does a decent job at making the best of a bad lighting situation. Next, let's listen to some audio samples. This is with the built-in microphones, wind reduction mode on, and no windscreen. The audio quality sounds all right, but you can still hear that low end wind noise. When it comes to action cameras, I think you always need some type of external windscreen, whether it be foam or a little furry cover. I like to use these little furry wind covers you can find on Amazon. You can use either double sided tape or super glue to attach them onto the camera. Make sure you cover up both mics, one on the left, one on the right. I'm only showing one furry screen here, but when filming, I had both. Here's what the audio sounds like with those installed. This is my go-to setup. They're easy to install and it does a good job of cutting out wind noise in all but the fastest riding situations. I've also been testing the DJI Mic 2 which comes with its own fuzzy cover and it can be paired wirelessly via Bluetooth with the Action 4. The Mic 2 has both a clip-on and magnetic mount but I found it easiest just to zip tie it to the camera and then mount that to my helmet. Mic 2 costs an extra $100 US and adds a little bit more work to your setup, but it does give you exceptional audio quality in windy environments. For example, if you were in the bike park only riding high speed trails, it would do a much, much better job of cutting out wind noise, even compared to the DIY windscreens that I showed you before. Next, let's talk about field of view. I only use the widest setting on this camera, which is called ultra wide, and that yields 155 degree field of view. The Action 4 strikes a pretty good balance between a wide field of view and minimal distortion. It doesn't have the absolute widest field of view and it did take me a bit more time to fine tune the angle to get the right balance of bike and horizon. But since I found the right spot, I've been pretty happy with the footage. It felt a bit tight coming from the Insta360 X3 that I used last year. That was a 360 camera and you could customize the field of view, but ultimately it's a trade off between getting a wider shot or having less distortion. <laughs> to get the POV angle you see in my videos, I mount the camera to the chin bar of my full face helmet using one of two 3D printed mounts made by ProBike 3D. The upper mount is good when you want to focus on the trail directly in front of you, for example when you're riding woodwork, but the best overall option is to use the lower chin mount, which gives you a more balanced perspective between the bike and the horizon. The Action 4 uses a magnetic quick release mount that makes it easy to remove the camera without affecting your camera angle. So whether you need to check your settings, change a battery, change an SD card, clean your lens, or just take the camera off while you're climbing, you can do so quickly and easily without having to reset your camera angle. To shoot vertical video, you can use the plastic cage included with the Action 4, and if you're switching back and forth between vertical and horizontal video, you can just leave the cage on as it works with both orientations. One little tip I have once you've dialed in your camera angle is to take an X-Acto knife and make a small slit across both the DJI and 3D printed helmet mount. This will make it easier to maintain your camera angle should you ever need to remove the mount, and will also serve as a reference point if you need to make small adjustments to your angle depending on the speed of the trail or how far you're looking ahead. In terms of stabilization, I use the Rock Steady mode, which offers the least amount of stabilization, and I think that does a good job of reducing the camera shake while also giving a sense of what the terrain is like. I think we've actually gotten to a point with all action cameras where, if anything, they make the footage look too stable and unnatural, so I appreciate when the stabilization algorithm wow. doesn't overpower the footage. In terms of form factor, the Action 4 is quite compact, both smaller and lighter than the X3, as well as the GoPro Hero 12. The Action 4 has a replaceable lens cover, which is quite handy, especially if you go over the bars and scratch your lens. Because it's a flat lens, it's also much easier to clean. So for example, if I'm out riding in terrible conditions, I don't hesitate to wipe this lens with a dirty glove, even in the muddiest of conditions, because I know that the lens will survive. And even if it doesn't develop some scratches over time, it's very easy to replace. Thanks for watching today's video. If you like what you saw from the DJI Osmo Action 4, you can pick up your own camera through the link down in the description. And please let me know if you have any questions about my camera setup down in the comments.